This is the first video of your web design class. It's going to show you how to make a basic web page. There's three main objectives to this, and that is to show you how to lay out the HTML structure, where to put the CSS, and where to put the JavaScript. Now, the CSS is the style of the page, and the JavaScript handles the behavior of the page. So, the tool that we're going to be using for this is Notepad++. This is over here on the left. I'm going to show you how to download that in a minute. Um, the website for it is notepad-plus-plus.org. It is a free download, and it allows you to uh, code up web pages. You can even do other types of programming with it as well. Uh, and it, the thing that we're going to be benefiting the most from today is having these line numbers over here on the left. So it's an excellent plain text editor. Uh, you could also, if you're on a Windows computer at home or in the computer lab, you can use Notepad. But I've installed Notepad++ on all the machines. I encourage you that you use that as well. All right, so the second step, uh, or the first step that we're going to do here is to create a file folder for your web page and its resources. And this is a pattern that you should be following for the remainder of the projects in this course. So uh, on the H drive, if you're in the lab or if you're working from home, just click on your desktop, select New, and then click Folder. And call the name of the folder, the name of the project that you're working on. In this case, it's Lesson 1. So I'm going to call this folder Lesson 1. And then I'm going to open up Notepad++. And I can either uh, go to the file menu and select new, or I can push control N. That opens up new text document. I actually have one already open, so I'm going to use that. And then we're going to save this as an HTML page in this folder that we just created over here. So I'm going to click file. I'm going to go save as. I'm going to navigate to the desktop because that's where I saved it. I'm going to click into the lesson one folder, and then I'm going to name this web page lesson1.html. So I'm basically converting this from a text document into an HTML file, which makes it a web page. OK, next up is the HTML structure itself. So every HTML web page should have this type of setup. So let me type this out and tell you what each thing means. First is called the doc type declaration. Now this is all uppercase, the, the word doc type, and then HTML. Now what this signifies is that there is a set of rules that the browser is going to use to read this page. When it reads the code of it and it says, oh, the doc type of this is HTML. That's the HTML5 set of rules. Now I have in this presentation over here some different doc types just so you can see the difference. And that is, here's an XHTML. This is now older. Um, an older set of rules that uh, would have been used 10 years ago or so. And then HTML4, you can see these are much longer to write out, by the way. Um, but these are different sets of rules that would parse the page differently in each browser. So uh, it's just how the browser is going to interpret it. So the latest and greatest version is HTML5, and it's a very simple way to put it. So that's great for us. Uh, we're just going to type this opening bracket, the exclamation point doc type HTML closing bracket. So these things are called tags in HTML, and all the different elements of the page need to be surrounded by them. That's how the page knows that this is not text. It's actually an, uh, something that's going to be identifying a part of the page. Okay, the next line, it's going to say HTML. And that be basically is telling the browser, this is where the HTML is going to begin. And then every tag is also going to have a closing tag. And that's signified by this backslash. So I have the opening tag, the backslash, and then I'm just going to say the whole thing again. And that's HTML. So this is where the, be the HTML begins. And this is where it's going to end. Everything else comes in between. So I'm going to go ahead and add myself some space in here. And the reason why I did both of these at the same time is because it's easy to forget the closing tag, especially when you put a lot of stuff in between. But this is going to be a teeny tiny page. 
Uh, so sh you should be able to see it from top to bottom. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is within the HTML, you have the head of the HTML and you also have the body of the HTML. So let's start off with the head. The head goes at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and close the head as well. I'm going to go back up a line. And inside of this, I'm going to basically put one thing right now. And I'll come back and add more later. But I'm going to put the title of the page. I'm going to call the title of the page my awesome web page. Okay. And that's what goes up here at the tops of these tabs. So this one said Notepad++. This one said Lesson Number 1. It's a Google Slides. That's what this does, is it's going to put that up there. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm going to be putting here is the body. So this is where all the content of the page is going to go. So within the body, I am going to put an H1 tag. And what that means is it's a heading. This is the very first heading. And according to the rules of browsers, this is generally going to be bigger than the rest. So I'm going to say, hello, web design class. I'm going to close that H1 tag. And that's it for now. I'm going to add the CSS and JavaScript in a minute, but we have a full-fledged web page at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close that Notepad++. I'm going to open up a new tab. And let me show you what you can do. I'm going to open up this folder. I'm just going to drag this page into it. And here you can see this is the page that we've created so far. It just says, hello, web design class, white background, black letters. We're going to change that. But you can see also the title is up here as well. So one of the things I can do is I can actually view the page source. And here you can see this is exactly what I typed over here. So it has parsed the page. It has read the page in and formatted it according to these rules. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add that CSS that I talked about. So this is the styles of a web page. So again, now we've done the structure part of our objectives. Let me show you where to put the CSS next. This is also going to go in the head section. So I'm going to go after the closing title tag. And since this is style, you open it up by saying style. Actually, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to call this type equals text slash CSS. And that's telling the browser that we're going to type this out as text, but I want you to parse it. I want you to interpret it as a cascading style sheet. All right, and then I'm going to close this as well and put the CSS in the middle. So for readability, I'm going to add some space. And... Uh, since I'm talking about that, space here doesn't really matter. One space is the same as a thousand spaces. The um, browser, whether it's Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or Safari, uh, they will ignore extra white space. So you can make your documents more readable by adding some extra space in between each section here like I did. Okay, so the page, let's go back and look at it. So here is our code in the browser, and then here is the way it looks. All of this is in the body. So let's make the body a different color. So I'm going to say the style of the body. So I'm just going to type the word body, and then I'm going to open up a left-facing curly brace. Now, thanks to Notepad++, it go ahead, it, it's going to give, give me matching curly braces here. So I'm going to go ahead and expand those out. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say the color, and this refers to the text color, then a colon, I'm going to say is going to be white. And next we're going to add the background color. So I'm going to go ahead and type background dash color. And one of the things, I'm going to show you a trick here real quick. If I start typing background 
or even just the first couple of letters, I get all of these options that uh, Notepad++ wants to help me out with. And I can hit Tab to auto-complete, and it's a quick way to type. So it's a nice little trick to know. And then we need to add another colon, and then I'm going to make the background blue. And then I'm going to use another semicolon. Now at the end of each line, notice I had to put a semicolon or it stops reading at that point. So make sure that you add these. It's often a overlooked thing. So if you don't add, end each one of these lines with a semicolon within the CSS, you have problems. So now I can actually save this. And if I reload my, let me show you the code over here. If I click this tab, if I reload it, I should see my style pop in here in the head section. And there it is. So now that I know that this is in here, if I test the web page over here, the text should switch to white and the background to blue. And there it goes. So we have styled the page now. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to handle the behavior of the page. Now the behavior of the page uh, is something that you're going to want to put at the bottom of your HTML document right before the closing body tag. So that's this right here. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of space above the body. And instead of up top where we called it style, down here we want to call it script. So I'm going to open up a tag and then I'm going to type script. And I'm going to auto complete that with the tab key. And the type of this type equals, it's going to be text, but I want to have it interpreted as JavaScript. So I'm going to type JavaScript here. And then I can close this, and then I'm going to add some space, and I'm going to close the script tag. And I'm going to bump that over just so it looks easier, to, like it's easier to read. All right, so uh, this next part is going to take a little bit of explaining, but don't worry about it. We're going to focus on the JavaScript um, more towards the end of the course, but I do want to introduce it now so that you know it's there as we go along. So let's go ahead and uh, create some variables. So to create a variable in JavaScript, you just type the word var. So var is short for variable. And I'm going to give this variable a name. It could be anything I want, but I'm going to call it bg for background. And I'm going to say equals, and then what you do in JavaScript is you scan the document for stuff. So the word document refers to the page that we're on, and then I'm going to say get element, notice the capital E, and then by with a capital B, and then ID. So I'm going to have to give some of these IDs up above an ID, but for now, Let's just call it main. All right, so I'm going to have a variable called main, and I also need to put a semicolon at the end of this. It's kind of like putting a period at the end of the sentence. Now, in the next line, I'm going to make another variable, and this is for the h1. So I'm going to say h1 equals somewhere in the document, so the word document, get element by ID, and I'm going to find heading 1, and then another semicolon. Now right now, it's not going to find that stuff because I haven't ID'd them. So I'm going to go up here to the body and give the body an ID equals main. And then for the h1 tag, I'm going to give this an ID equals heading 1. So now, these two variables are actually pointing or referring to this element, so the entire body. And the heading 1 is right here. You can see when I double click on it, they match. They're highlighted. So this tag is what it refers to. And now we can manipulate those as we go. Now I'm going to create another variable that's a, uh, it's called a Boolean variable. And it's going to be called is blue. I'm just making up that name. It doesn't really exist in any programming language. It's something that I'm making up. And I'm referring to the background color. Is the background color blue? Um, and right now, I'm going to set that to true with a semicolon at the end. Because 
this page is going to be read in from the browser from top to bottom and when it gets through this CSS section it's going to set up the page as blue to begin with so by default it is blue so this is a true statement now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called a function a function is just a stored procedure. It's, it's something that we can kind of bundle up and package and we can reuse whenever we want it. And I'm going to give it a name. It could be any name I want, just like these variables above, and I'm going to call it change color. And then I'm going to put in these open paren and close paren parentheses. Uh, and that just indicates that I'm not going to be passing any variables to it. Okay, and just like above in the CSS, it needs some curly braces that tells it this is the body of the function that we're calling. Uh, and just like the CSS up above, this is the body um, of these styles. So, okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is inside this function, I'm going to write some code that's called an if-then statement. It's a condition. It's a test. So if... And in parentheses, we're going to put is blue equals equals true. So that's a test. So if I'm if the background is currently blue, then I'm going to change it to red. And the way that I can do that is I can refer to the background like this. I can say BG because that points to the background. And then I can say the style of it, which is the background color. Now in JavaScript, we have to get rid of the hyphen here, but we're just going to say background color equals red. All right, and that's done. I'm going to be changing the color if I find out that the color is blue. Now, in addition to changing the color and the style of a page, like we did here, um, we can also change the text of the page as well. We can change just about anything. So let me just demonstrate that as well. And we created a variable called h1, which actually points to the h1 element up above with the ID of heading 1. So here is a tag on the page. And we can change the inner HTML of it. Now, let me explain what this means here uh, by doing this. This is the beginning of the H1 tag. This is the ending of the H1 tag. Everything in between is the inner HTML. So what's inside of this, we can change it by simply saying inner HTML equals, and I'll just say something fun like uh, my web design students are awesome three exclamation points. And at the end of that statement, you have to put a semicolon. That just tells the JavaScript that's the end of the line. OK, and we have three variables. And this is the third one right here, is blue. Well, we changed the color of the page to red, so it's no longer blue. So is blue, we should change and assign it the value of false, because it's no longer blue. So let me point out the difference here between the two equals signs together and the single. The single one actually assigns a value, and the double equals is a test of value. So it's asking the question, is blue equal to true? Question mark. And the second one says, make is blue equal to false. So this is assigning it the value. Okay, so we switched the page over to red, and now what we're also going to do is we're going to make it so that it can also switch it back to blue and say what it used to say. So you can do that with the else statement here. So an if else statement is kind of like flip-flopping the code back and forth. So I'm going to say else and have a left curly brace, which gives me the other one as well. So let me Go ahead and separate that with a couple lines. And then I'm going to shortcut this by copy and pasting this code. So I'm going to copy this stuff from above down below, but just change what it says. So in this case, uh, we're assuming that it's not blue. In this case, we switch it to red. So I'm going to switch it back to blue 
by changing the bottom one to blue. And what's in quotes here is what we changed it to. So let's change it back. I'm going to say hello web design class. I'm going to copy and paste that from above and paste it in right there. And now is blue is true again. So, so this little block of code flip flops between red and blue and also changes what the text up here is going to say back and forth. Now this little block of code is like a reserved or reusable block of code that I can call any time I want. So uh, in order to make that work, I'm going to ha have to set up a timer on the page. And to do that, it's called set interval. So I'm going to go ahead and type set interval. Notice the capital I in here. And then inside a set of parentheses, I'm going to call that function. It's called change color. And then I have to give it an interval of time. And that's measured in milliseconds. So I'm going to set 3,000 milliseconds, which is equal to 3 seconds. So every 1,000 milliseconds is a second. And I'm just going to wait three seconds and then call that function. And it's going to do that over and over and over again. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of double check my code that I have all my semicolons in place. And they look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to show you over here that I, if I reload the browser, there's all of my JavaScript code. So that's the code behind this page that's running. And now if I refresh this and wait about three seconds, the page changed color and the text changed color. And now it's going to be on this loop of every three seconds, changing the text and the color back and forth. So we have successfully made our first web page, and we've done HTML, we've done CSS, and we've done JavaScript. Let me give you a quick tour of exactly what we just did. So back over here, this is the HTML structure that we followed. We set the doc type to be HTML5. That's the most current version of HTML. We begin the document by just saying this is where the HTML begins. There's a head section, and in that head section, if I were to scroll up in the code, we put the title of the page in there, and we put the CSS. So that's where the CSS is going to go. And then after the head section is the body section. This is where the main content of our page is going to go. And as we move through the quarter and semester, the body section is going to really fill up with content. So um, this is also where we put the JavaScript. And that was the kind of the biggest section in here that we typed up. And that changed the behavior of the page. The page actually changed every three seconds. It wasn't the same old web page that we were looking at. But if I were to shrink this down, that just little block of JavaScript, and I shrink down the CSS, you can see there's not much there to it. So this is the basic page. And uh, from this point forward, we're going to build upon this structure of the page with additional content.